Hello, my friends. It is concept maps time. I love math concept maps. I mean, I love concept maps in general, but I honestly love them for math. Okay, so in this video, I need to start off with what the hell are concept maps? <laughs> so we'll be going over that. I'm gonna talk about how students can create them and how the purpose of it is really to link mathematical ideas for like a deeper and richer understanding and meaning of math concepts. So let me just get straight into what the hell is a concept map? Okay, so please don't click out of the video right now just because you're seeing this. This is an example of a concept map. And I know it's a lot for the eye to take in, but bear with me because the definition of a concept map is in this concept map, which I thought was kind of cool. Okay, so let me get into it. Hopefully you can follow along as I'm reading and where I'm going on this map. Again, it gives a definition. Okay, so the concept consists of words, in boxes, the words are connected by phrases using arrows defining the relationship. That's one section. The concept also represents the relationship between concepts connected to ideas and ideas connected to concepts. Okay, that's another section. The concept helps you reflect upon what you know and what you don't know. All right, and the concepts, major ideas are connected to form a network of words in boxes. So as you can see, this concept map actually defines what a concept map is. And if that was too fast for you, put it on pause and just like take in this map. Okay, so here's another example that I pulled up from Google. <laughs> Maybe visually this is a little bit better. Let's take a look. So concept map is basically just a diagram that depicts relationships between concepts. Like that's really all it boils down to. It's obviously like a graphical tool, right? We use it to organize ideas. We use it to visualize ideas. And we use it as a connection, right? To see the relationships between all these things based off the concept that we're giving them. Here's why they're very useful. They help with memory. It can be used for brainstorming, which is really effective. And if you give students a chance to be creative with this, they can, they can use like colors and icons and visual cues and mnemonics. Like this can be a very creative outlet for them. I mean, taking a look at this, which is quite simple. If the concept is a polygon, one example of a polygon is a triangle. So the example here shows that triangles just inside the shape of a triangle. So it's really connecting the idea within a visual. Okay, so hopefully that gave you an example of what the gist of this is. A concept just like branches off brainstorming, um, relationships and ideas and visuals about that concept. Let's talk about how students create them. First off, you wanna provide students with materials. Now, yes, you can just give them a pencil and paper and have them create a concept map. I don't suggest that at first. I recommend actually giving them materials first. If you provide students with some type of cardstock or whatever, some post-its and some markers, there's some flexibility in the post-its piece, right? Because they could actually rip off an idea that they wrote and place it somewhere else. So there's flexibility in the movement. Now, as far as markers, they can actually take markers and use specific colors to link some ideas. Okay, so let's just take this concept map for an example. So let's say with their markers, students wanted to list all the quadrilaterals in blue on their post-it. And maybe they wanted to list the different types of triangles with a green marker, something like that. So I recommend post-its, I recommend uh, markers. They can get creative with it in any way that they'd like. And I recommend cardstock just because when you're kind of pulling the post-it off stuff, paper is a little bit flimsy and kind of mess up. So I recommend something a little stronger. And honestly, most of all, it makes it hands-on, right? So you wanna get these creative juices flowing I want students to have movement here. This is a great way to start concept maps and introduce them is by making it hands-on. It makes it engaging. So after you provide students materials, then you provide them with the concept. Okay, so some warnings about the concept. Do not make it very vague at first. Like the word polygon, that's too vague. It's too much. And when a concept is that large, 
it'll be harder for students to focus in on their thoughts and ideas. Sometimes we think, well, the broader, the better, because you'll have a lot of terms and you'll have a lot of post-its, but that becomes actually very overwhelming for students at first. So that's why it's best to start off with a narrow topic. So for example, this is a very specific narrow topic. It's not polygons, which could be a ton of stuff. It's just acute. So an acute angle. Here's what a simple concept map may look like. Someone may say equilateral triangle, an angle less than 90 degrees. Some people may draw an acute angle. Some people may list the degrees of angles that would be acute, like 12, 30, anything less than 90. Notice that because it's not a broad term, it focuses in students on specific pieces and characteristics and ideas. Now you can use number webs as a concept map for primary students in order to get them started. So for example, for our primary students, we may wanna give them the number nine, give them a ton of post-its, and then just have them go at it and represent nine in a ton of different ways. This is specifically with expressions, but they can draw like a 10 frame, they can draw a rec and rec to show it, they can draw tally marks to represent nine, um, they can put maybe their name, maybe their name has nine letters. So you really want students to go at it with the way that they represent it and the way that they characterize it. Now for primary students, of course you want them to work on it individually, but you really want them to work on it collaboratively because that's really gonna help them like spark ideas. So let's say for example, a student said eight plus one. Eight plus one does describe nine, that's a great expression but you can ask students to expand on or find a different way to write eight plus one, which one way could be four plus four plus one, right? Because that still gives you eight plus one. So you could ask for extensions in creating this concept map. This is a great way for primary students to start off. Now, as I mentioned, concept maps are a very collaborative process. For primary students, like I said, you really want them to collaborate a lot. You actually want every grade level to collaborate on their first concept maps or their first couple of concept maps. The collaboration piece is key. You could of course have them generate ideas on their own at first, but there has to be a time, I mean, there has to be, where they come together as a group, a triad, partners and they share what they've done individually with each other. And they could even like merge their concept maps into one. Okay, so what do you do throughout this concept map time? All you have to do is watch and question. As students are working on these concept maps, this is such a great opportunity for you to walk around and question them. Now, not interrogate them, but question them. Get an understanding of student thinking, right? check for misconceptions, or just like push their work, push their thinking that they're already doing. Maybe they have some really great post-its on there, some ideas, really great visuals, just push that. Now it's very important with concept mapping that you are not providing them with hints. You want them to construct their own meaning of this concept. All you simply have to do is just question what's on their map. Why did you put this? Tell me more about this oh, I like this idea. Tell me why you want it to connect with this. What's the relationship here? It's just questions like that that get students thinking about their work. They're reflecting on the work that they put in. And when you question like that, it sometimes like sparks different ideas as they're talking to you where they're like, oh, I've seen this a billion times. Oh, wait, hold on. This is something too. And then they take out their post-it real quick and add it to it. So you really wanna have those conversations with them as they're working on their concept maps. Okay, so as mentioned before, concept maps are a creative process. Here's why I keep repeating this. Their concept map does not have to look like yours. Their concept map does not have to be pretty or neat. Honestly, to tell you the truth, it could be a hot mess. But if they understand the organization, like if they have an organization to it and they understand the connections, that's all you need. Don't dictate to them like how to make it clean or like how to organize it in the way you would organize it. And I'm gonna be very honest, type A people. This is very hard for you. I'm a type A person, so I know this from experience. This is very hard for you to kind of stand back and be like, 
oh, geez, there's scribbles and this is messy and I would put this here and this would go better right here. Leave it alone. Okay, so they've created their concept maps in a really creative way. You've walked around, you've questioned them, you've pushed their thinking. They talk about it with each other. They talk about it with groups. You pull the class together, you share concept maps. What's next? The next piece is you save them. So students create their own, but I would highly suggest that you make a group one with um, pieces of theirs, right? So it's like a collaborative concept maps created by the whole class based off their individual work. And you want that posted. Here's why. It allows students to go back to the idea. As they're learning more things along the way, they can go back to the concept map and be like, oh crap, this actually connects to this. I think we should add another post-it there. The class can have a discussion about that. Should we add another post-it to this? Does that work? Why not? Why does it? So for example, let's take a look at this. Let's say my concept map group class concept map was decimals and we had some of these prompts already here. It's a fraction, the number, you know, four tenths, tenths and hundreds are decimals. But let's say that we start talking about money later. That's something that's connected to decimals. That could be a post-it. Then you add it to that concept map. Or perhaps we get into the concept that a decimal point separates a whole number and a decimal number. Now that probably was taught when students were learning decimals, but perhaps no one created a post-it on it. Like it just flew over people's heads. But then someone remembers it, right? Then you use a post-it and add it onto the concept map. It's a way for students to revisit this and they learn to make more connections. And I say it all the time, math is all about connections. So I recommend keeping the concept maps. Now students of course can keep their concept map posters for themselves on their own, but you can later transition students to creating concept maps in their notebook or something like that. That way they have something to refer to um, and add on to their own personal concept map. If it's in the notebook, it's kind of easier for them to kind of just flip to that page and add on a piece. So concept maps hands-on at first for a while and then transitioning to like some independent book that they have. Okay, so just to recap the benefits of concept mapping. So just starting off with it's motivating as hell. It's a creative process for kids, which we often don't see or allow in math. It lets the kids organize, present, and explain their ideas and the connections that they've made. I mean, it lets students display like their deep understanding of a concept. And lastly, which we didn't talk about, is concept maps are a great way to review a concept. It's a great formative assessment piece for you. It's a great way to introduce a concept as well, see what they know about it, and then they could add to along the way. So I'm hoping that in this video, you saw the benefits of using a concept maps and just how kick-ass concept maps are for math. Honestly, I cannot wait to see the concept maps that your students create.